When driving, what's the difference between pulling over and pulling alongside? Pull up and pull in. Pull off and pull out. Don't let phrasal verbs frustrate you. Let's straighten them out together. First, in this video, I'll explain each phrasal verb and then I'll bring them together in a true story and a dramatic story about my very first car crash. Not that I've had loads. Number one is pull out. If you pull out in your car, it means that you move away from the side of the road or you emerge from a junction. So you pull out into the main road from a small side road. <sighs> I was happily driving down the road when some fool pulled out in front of me without looking. Next, we have to pull off. This means to leave the road in order to stop for a short time. For example, the fuel gauge started flashing at us, so we pulled off at the nearest junction to find a petrol station. Next, we have pull over. This means to move your vehicle to the side of the road to stop or just to briefly like slow right down to allow something to pass, like an emergency vehicle. I could see an ambulance behind me flashing its lights, siren going, so I pulled over to let it pass. Next we have pull in. This means to move to the side of the road or to a place where you can stop. So you might pull into a service station or pull into a car park or just pull in to the side of the road. Oh, I'm so desperate for the toilet. Just pull into the first garage you see. Next, we have to pull up. This means to slow down and stop, not necessarily at the side of the road or in any particular place. You just stop. I pulled up at the traffic lights and waited for those lights to turn green so I could pull off again. Ah, yes. Please note that pull off can also be used to describe the moment when you go again when you leave after being stationary. I pulled up at the traffic lights and waited for those lights to turn green so I could pull off again. Next we have pull alongside. This means to move directly beside something even if it's still in motion. You pull alongside it. While driving down the dual carriageway, two teenagers on a motorbike pulled alongside us. It made me feel very uncomfortable. So at the beginning, I asked you, what's the difference between pull over and pull alongside? Well, if a policeman pulls alongside you, then it simply means that he comes next to your vehicle. You may be sitting at some traffic lights and a policeman pulls alongside you, gives you a little nod, and you give him a little nod, feeling suddenly quite nervous for no reason, and then the light turns green and you start driving, but the policeman is tailing you, and he starts his lights and an indicator, and he's telling you to pull over. At this point, he wants you to leave the road and come over to the side of the road to stop. The police car has pulled you over. This is because when he pulled alongside you, he noticed your wing mirror was missing. And he noticed that when he pulled alongside you. Therefore, he allowed you to pull in front of him while he made some checks on his radio. Excuse me, can I just call in a reg plate and tell me uh, a, a registration number? You tell me if this is a, a dodgy one or not. And then he finds out some information about you and he pulls you over. Excuse me, do you know that your wing mirror is missing? That's illegal, you know. Pull alongside, pull over. What's the difference between pull up and pull in? To pull up is simply to stop. Like you might pull up at the traffic lights if the traffic lights are red, or you would pull up at the a junction where it says stop. You pull up, you wait, and then you check and you go again. To pull in again is to move over to the side of the road or to go into a specific place to stop like a car park or a service station or an area at the side of the road that is designated for quick stops. You pull in, you pull up, whoa, and you pull in, whoa. <laughs> Next, I asked the difference between pull off and pull out. To pull off is to come off a road 
with the expectation that you're going to stop for a short time. So if you're on a long journey or on the motorway, you might need to pull off at a service station to go to the toilet, stretch your legs and grab something to eat. And to pull out is to emerge and come back into the traffic or to come out of a junction into another road. So you pull off, oh, let's just stop for a minute. And then you pull out, hello. Okay, I hope that helped. Now it's time for a true story. Not long after passing my driving test, I was involved in a car crash. It was a head on collision, which wrote off both cars involved. I was driving down the road. My side of the road consisted of two lanes. I was on the outside lane, which is the nearest lane to the middle of the road. There was stationary traffic in the inside lane, all pulled up at the lights waiting to turn left. But my lane was for vehicles going straight ahead and my lights were green, so my lane was moving freely. Bye-bye, suckers. I didn't say that. I was moving at around 20 to 25 miles per hour from a junction on my left up ahead, which I couldn't see due to stationary traffic, a car was about to emerge. He pulled out without checking the second lane, just as I arrived. <gasps> By the time I saw his car pull out, I had zero time to brake. We slammed into each other. <laughs> it was a mess. In shock, my first thought was, to move out of the way. So I pulled off the main road, pulling into the junction from which the other car had emerged. The other car did the same and we both pulled over to the side of the road. I called my mum as I wasn't far from home. Then I got out to talk to the other driver who was in fact pinned inside his car due to his door buckling. A witness pulled alongside us, offering me her details for insurance purposes. We all exchanged details and I waited for my mum to pick me up. That was my story, but did you spot the six phrasal verbs? Not long after passing my driving test, I was involved in a car crash. It was a head-on collision, which wrote off both cars involved. I was driving down the road. My side of the road consisted of two lanes. I was on the outside lane, which is the nearest lane to the middle of the road. There was stationary traffic in the inside lane, all pulled up at the lights waiting to turn left. But my lane was for vehicles going straight ahead and my lights were green, so my lane was moving freely. Bye-bye, suckers. I didn't say that. I was moving at around 20 to 25 miles per hour from a junction on my left up ahead, which I couldn't see due to stationary traffic, a car was about to emerge. He pulled out without checking the second lane, just as I arrived. <gasps> By the time I saw his car pull out, I had zero time to brake. We slammed into each other. <laughs> it was a mess. In shock, my first thought was, to move out of the way. So I pulled off the main road, pulling into the junction from which the other car had emerged. The other car did the same and we both pulled over the side of the road. I called my mum as I wasn't far from home. Then I got out to talk to the other driver who was in fact pinned inside his car due to his door buckling. A witness pulled alongside us, offering me her details for insurance purposes. We all exchanged details and I waited for my mum to pick me up. Now, phrasal verbs are tricky to learn because you have to learn each individual phrasal verb in context. If you find this to be quite a daunting task and you want to brush up on your phrasal verbs and improve in a very short space of time, then I can highly recommend my phrasal verb booster. My students love it. You can onboard up to 300 phrasal verbs in just 30 days. It's really fun. All you have to do is turn up to your lessons and even though it's a 30-day challenge, you have access to everything for life, so you can take it at your own pace. For more information on the booster, click on the link in the description below. Until next time, take care and goodbye. The cats have just started talking on the roof. Can you hear them? <laughs>